We have a special offer for our faithful listeners. The promo code PODCAST20 takes 20% off the tuition for some of our e-learning online courses. The course lineup includes classics by Kenneth D. King, Pamela Leggett, and other trusted sewing instructors. You can count on threads for expertise in these on-demand learning experiences. Learn at your own pace anytime you want to log in. Check out the course lineup at threadsmagazine.com forward slash e-learning and don't forget to apply the code PODCAST20 for your 20% discount. Hello, and welcome to Sewing with Threads, the monthly podcast by the staff of Threads Magazine. I'm Threads Editorial Director, Sarah McFarland, and our guest today, or my guest today, is Joy Mahone. Hi, Joy. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being on. You're a repeat guest for us, and you're very well known in sewing circles. I would say Joy has written articles for Threads. Uh, you've written several books. Uh, you're McCall's pattern designer and a craftsy class instructor, too. And I know you have your own studio in Sioux City, Iowa, where you teach classes and do custom clothing. And I've even seen you win uh, Association of Sewing Design Professional Challenges, too. So welcome to the podcast. I'm very happy to chat with you again. And so what's what have you been doing lately? Well, it's been really busy. The most recent and exciting thing is my niece got married. And so I did have the opportunity to design her wedding gown, which was really fun. So that's uh, fresh in my mind. But we have had a lot of custom gowns. And of course, it's tis the season. So that's a lot of what, what's what been going on now. And, and some things are seasonal, of course. But yeah, lots of custom and classes are really you know booming now. So that's been keeping me busy. And your niece's dress, if it's all right, we'll share a picture of it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it in the video. And I remember for that, I think you said that you were working with a lot of lace and lace techniques. Yes, I think the whole thing, it's really kind of funny because she, um, I would I, I would not have expected so much lace from her. Uh, she's such a sweet little gal and sweet personality. And so everything just really clicked, you know, and I think that's a big part of design is, you know, picking the elements that match your personality and what you're wearing it for. And so, yes, I think the underlying theme, and I don't know if it was intentional on her part, was like the feature of all of these beautiful laces. And so uh, I did a gown for her mother, my sister-in-law, and that was a beautiful piece, like smoky blue lace that I did pretty much everything by hand. I made a a Wee Pierre lace jacket for myself. But then yes, her dress had yards and yards of this beaded re-embroidered lace. And I had to put all of that on by hand. So it took a long time, but very, very meaningful. That's wonderful that you're able to do that for family members. I don't often get to sew for family members, but to do that all together at once, all that very intricate lace work. Yeah. What's funny is that sometimes sewing for family members is like the worst thing to do, but, (laughs) um, but no, this, yeah. And and Brooke's just a doll. So everything was, she's very like, trust the process. That's a phrase that she says a lot. And I have picked that up and I really love that. And she's very like, I'll just step back and let the experts do their job. And she did that in all from like the food to the all element, you know, she had ideas of things that she wanted, but uh, you know, so she, and that's really what design's about is it's very collaborative. It's not just you, the designer pushing ideas, you, like you work together. And I think when that, uh, that, uh, that happens the way it should, like that's when, you know, the, I think the best things happen in design. And so that really helped for sure. So yeah, but sometimes friends and family are the most difficult to work with. Yeah. Now, Joy, something that I thought was very interesting about you, we were recently worked on a project together and in working on your bio for the project, uh, you shared that you really started sewing when you were six years old and had been interested in design since then. So on this episode, I really wanted to ask you if you could tell me more about how you got into sewing and how that took you into writing about sewing, being an author and being an educator. 
Okay, sure. So, uh, you know, everyone has their own journey for sure. And I know a lot of sewers have started, you know, many, many years ago, and that was definitely true for me. Um, and so, yeah, when I was really little, I remember, I think my, my earliest memory really was going to my grandma's farm and she would get these catalogs. And if I use the term Hirschners, I think some people would say, oh, I remember those, but she had oh. these I know her. You? Yes. Okay, yeah, yes. and like Annie's attic, and you know, good housekeeping, yes. and family circle, and all of those things. And I, I loved paper dolls. So I think I re- loved paper dolls from like as early as I can remember. So I don't know if that's what sparked my interest in clothing. I kind of think so, just because I remember, you know, my mom always bought paper dolls, but Grandma always had those. I think there each month there was one in one of those magazines she had, but she had that Hirschner's catalog that would have everything from needle arts to sewing projects, you know, anything crafty. And I loved looking through those and, and even, and I do remember trying to figure out, okay, cause I, I didn't have any way to buy those things. And I, I knew my parents probably wouldn't like buy, you know, buy that for a, you know, six, seven, eight year old at the, t- at the time. But I would try in my, in my mind, you know, we joke about Pinterest fails or these epic fails these days where you like oh, try yeah. to mimic something and then you make it and it doesn't look exactly like the picture but it was like the opposite for me so in my mind I would copy these things and I'll be honest like they would look terrible but in my mind like I nailed it you know it's like it looked like (laughs) the catalog um and it started with you know I would use socks like my mom always bought me those cute little girl decorative socks that would have like the ribbons and the bows and things on it and so I would like manipulate those for my Barbie dolls and in my mind (laughs) they looked like the magazine so um I would say I was the opposite of a lot of sewers these days that are so hard on themselves and they just don't get it the first time. And I'm like, nope, I nailed it. So, um, so I was going to say, like, isn't it nice to start yes. out with confidence? I know yeah. I've worked with kids sometimes and they just go for it. And it's I, really yes, fun. I think Yes. And I, I just, I remember that. And I think that that's kind of a, I'm sure, you know, as you get older and you know, your mindset changes, but boy, when you're kids, like, you know, you'll try anything. And, and, and so I do teach to that. So a lot of times I teach to the love and enjoyment before I teach to the meticulous and precision, because if you don't love something, you're never going to get there anyways. And so, you know, you want to enjoy your early experiences. And uh, so I just do remember that. And so that happened over over and over. My grandma was the one who always bought me little sewing kits. And I, I, this is kind of a fun little nugget. I remember going up into the attic at the farmhouse and there was like a a trunk or something that I would go in and there would be like all her little sewing notions. And and at that point she didn't sew as much as she did, you know, when, when like her kids were at the farm and all of that. And so I don't, you know, she did sew, but not, I don't ever remember sitting down and watching her at a sewing machine, but I do remember playing with her sewing notions. Now, fast forward, I have jars of those notions in my studio and I don't remember specific ones, but I'm sure that those are the ones that I played with when I was was little, which is kind of a, you know, a special little, little oh. sentimental detail. So I look at that and it's like, that's really kind of neat, but, but yeah, she really supported me. And so, yep. I just would always look at pictures and make these things. And in my mind, like I nailed it. But yeah, as I did start to develop more skills and I, you know, got into junior high, sewing classes were still really popular. I know some school systems have gotten rid of that. Some are bringing it back, uh, but we still had a very active um, sewing home ec department. And so sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I would do all the sewing classes. But in... um, Did you have any particular inspiring teacher or... Yes. Well, so, okay. So two experiences. So my my first, let's start with Mrs. Held, my my sewing teacher, and she was in junior high and high school. What's really kind of fun is that um, they have their own breed of of Angus cattle, I think is what they have, and they're only a few miles up the up the interstate from my studio. But she's since come back and taken a class with me, which I'm like, wow, like that's just so humbling, you know. Um, and she's come to my sewing holiday retreat. And 
And so we are in touch and, and that's really kind of a, you know, a neat little thing. And, um, but yeah, she, you know, the funny thing was that, um, I think everybody has a giftedness, what a music, art, drawing, you know, every, I do I think, I do yes. truly think you have to find it and you have to hone those skills. And some people are just like naturally gifted and other people just catch on and excel. So whatever it is, like I, I just do firmly believe that. Well, um, I do think sewing was my giftedness. I, I really only took one how to sew class and it was actually with the mother of a 4-H'er in my 4-H club. So I think looking back, I think it was sixth, sixth grade. It might've been seventh grade. You know, it's like you get just far enough from it and you're like, I think it was sixth grade, but it might've been <laughs> It starts seventh. to blur. It does. I know, yeah. <laughs> it does. So give her, oh dear, um, give, give or take, um, give or take that. But, um, so yeah, one of, uh, the moms and she taught sewing, but she was very, um, you sew and you rip and you sew and you rip. And so we made this cotton jacket. And I remember, you know, you just don't forget those things. I bought this cotton fabric from house of fabrics at the time. And it had little American flags on it. And, and it had a red zipper with a big round loop on it. I, I assume it probably was around fourth of July time in the summer. And so it, for weeks, like I would go and work on this at her house. And if you messed up, like you ripped it out. And so, but, but she sat down and like, you learned how to read a pattern and you learned everything about it. And that really was the only time. And it's just like, okay, I got it. Um, and so when I then in formal classes in school, when all the other kids are making their little, um, I think they're handcrafts or Han crafts, there was a, a cat catalog. I'm sure someone out there will say, oh, I remember ordering those those kits where it would be like fuzzy stuffed animals or little furry I was just going to say, I remember making stuffed animals. Yes, I, think, yes. I think we're pretty close in age. And yeah, yeah I remember in home. Yeah. 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 And I, of course, I loved going through those catalogs and, and picking out things. But all the other kids were making like the square pillow. And I, I'm not exaggerating when I say I sat off in the corner and I like made she, my Mrs. Hall just kind of let me make and whatever I wanted. <laughs> You know, so while the other kids ordered the square pillow, I ordered like 10 kits and I would get like the really hard, like, well, I remember it was a panda bear and it was like the, the most difficult level. And, and so I made like this giant stuffed panda bear and, um, and all the kids like had a pillow and I had a bear and, and so I, you know. I made the little stuffed black and white <laughs> rabbit and, oh, yeah. and I remember I remember the same thing. I remember ending up off by myself yes. away from the other kids and we did letter pillows. Okay. So yeah. I did like my whole name first and last yes. and then a bunch of the little stuffed animals. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think, you know, um, those are just really, you know, really impactful memories, you know, and I think that um, it's really important, you know, in sewing education, like on the flip side of things, like I do remember those things and some of like, you know, it's, it's not like the most difficult, fancy stuff that really like gets you, you know, into something that comes, you know, with, with that, that love of, of sewing or whatever your art form is, but those early experiences. And I think being able to, you know, to experiment with different things, uh, have some fails. I mean, that's how you learn really. And, and in, in kind of like, like that safe, constructive environment where like, Oh, you know what? I messed up. It's okay. Like, you know, pick up and, you know, and not just be so like, oh, I messed up. You know, I think sometimes as adults, we get very tense when we're learning something and we get very frazzled uh, because, we, you know, society is kind of like, you know, instant gratification. But I think when you can just, you know, really take, you know, the enjoyment, whether you succeed or not, I think that really, but yeah, so, uh, so I spent a lot of time in Mrs. Held's class by high school. I mean, I was making wedding like wedding like wedding gowns and I remember a pink gown that I did um, oh, I was going to ask you when you segued yeah. from like doll clothes into yeah, clothes for yeah. yourself well, or for other and, people yes and you know what was really popular were those and I just showed one of these on one of my Facebook live but it probably was like a McCall pattern I'm pretty sure but do you remember when the era of like the stuffed craft bunny and there were like the dolls that like stood in the corner and it was like there but it was like you sewed like these um, dolls and there were like the cotton bunnies with like the big layered fluffy dresses. I like, think they know what you're referring to. Kind of like had a yeah. yardstick doll. Which, okay. So she was she was sewn and she was okay. quite large and yeah. she had a yardstick backbone. 
Okay. Which, which I, I immediately broke. That my <laughs> mom made that. Of course. Yeah. I think it was in the era of like all the Daisy Kingdom stuff and all of that, where it was like layers and layers of like froofy dresses with lace oh, and yeah. all of that. And so I like made a lot of that uh, and I loved it. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, just, I think, you know, Mrs. Hell, you know, I just love her to pieces. And so, um, yeah, but then by my freshman year of high school, um, I was in jazz band and it's always just weird how things come together. And we were at a competition and my my friend was sitting at a table with another band member and his mom and she was a master tailor and um and my friend knew knew Linda and she's like oh joy sews and she's like you want a job and I'm like you know and it was just it just happened and so I started working as a tailor's assistant you know and as a freshman in high school and um yeah and then and I, boy like I I just can't like thank her enough, you know, for that experience. I already sewed really, really well. So I wouldn't say that she taught me how to sew, but I learned a lot of, um, oh, just all kinds of, you know, techniques and, and like, you expand, you know, like the how to. Oh, so yeah. you would, you would encounter all kinds of garments yes. working with a tailor yes. and fabrics and different yes. alterations. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, a lot. yeah. and I think that the, and, and a lot, actually a lot of, I mean, by the time I was in a, a senior in high school and off into college and when I would come back, like I could run the shop if she went on vacation, I did payroll. We had the manual till like counting back cash, you know, talking on, talking on the phone, which now when I have interns, like that's not a normal thing. Like, like the generation, they really don't like to do that. They'd rather text people. But I'm like, yeah, you still got to call customers, talk to them on the phone for a while. Anyways, that's still the thing. Um, you know, so so lots of valuable how to run a business skills. Um, but yeah, working with the tailor shop, I mean, I ran a lot of different accounts. So I would go and do deliveries. I could go to the stores and mark um, our suits if needed. A lot of times, like on the weekends, because I was the high school kid. And so I wasn't off like with my family the the tailor shop or the the suit store they would call I'd be on call and and like if there was a funeral or something I would go in open up the shop take care of business mark someone's suit tailor it and do that all without supervision and, and in a professional fashion so I did learn a lot about you know how clothing needs to look professional, you know, when, you, when you're getting paid for it, you know, in a business setting, it's just very different than when you sew for yourself, because there are just oh, expectations, sure. you know, from the public that, you, like, it, it, you know, the public doesn't recognize sometimes, um, you know, quality like we would as sewers, we would certainly recognize, but they do know when something doesn't look right or if like you can't you know sell a, something that's home sewn like looking you can't do that and so uh so learning finishing techniques and and all of that was really impactful but I think the biggest takeaway from working at the tailor shop was just literally learning to fit all body shapes and sizes from young to old you know big tall small what you know fit issues and, and being able to you know, to do that on my own you know obviously like with supervision initially but then at some point you know I just got to where like I just did it um and I think well, that it seems like that was a lot of responsibility at a pretty yeah. young age yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I loved it I love I just I yeah it was my thing like I I loved it yeah and looking back it's like how did that ever happen I mean that just yeah, right place at right time, I I, I guess. But yeah, yeah. just happened to be where you were sitting. Yeah, yeah. So I know it seems kind of like, a, and everyone has their own journey. Well, you but... you had a good reputation for being a, <laughs> a skilled sewist too. Oh, I'm sure. But yeah. So no, I just I always knew um, that I wanted to study design in college. So you know, went on to study you know that in school and. Um, yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot there. I, yeah, where do I even begin on, you know, all, all that we got to do and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, and so I always knew I wanted to start my own business. I will share a really short, funny thing. So by the time I was a senior in college, you know, so um, there I was one of the top students. And, and, and I always feel weird saying that because it's like, uh, you know, it's not like uh, it just I was and, um, but, uh, but we would do tours. So people in the industry would come 
Um, um, yeah, and I went to Iowa State University, so I guess I should I share that. Say, yeah, where share did where you, you go? Yeah. Um, and so we had the apparel merchandising design and production program. I think the title, like with everything, has shifted a little bit, but um, but very very, you know, you you would think like Iowa State. Um, top notch school. I mean, they like you, if you say you went to Iowa state and you go to New York city, you will get hired. Um, just the reputation, like in that regard, you know, the networking, I mean, there are so many people from Iowa state that work like in New York city. Um, and then of course th these days all over, you know, all over with the, you know, the internet, even since, you know, I graduated there, the possibilities are endless and people are everywhere and connected. So, I mean, that's really exciting too, but I remember doing tours of some of our industry dignitaries and of course they'd go around and ask all the students like well what are you going to do when you graduate and of course I'm like well I'm going to start my own business and I remember I, I will just say that this was an exec from like a big box store so it wasn't like it wasn't like a fashion specific store but this person's like well you can't do that like I that just to this day I'm like why would you ever tell someone like they couldn't do that of course I'm like oh yeah I will you know like a little self-motivated but um but it was just really funny because I I just like in my mind that's just always what I would do and um and it worked out but uh well you know you love the tailoring business and yeah. and you're good at it and you know you, I, I can tell you have such passion about it I'm curious about how your education your experience there led you into teaching and yeah. all of this education that you're doing. So how did that come about? Yeah, well, I, I and it's truth. I, I taught my first class when I was 14 because back to 4-H, like you would have like your project categories that were your specialties. And then it was always encouraged to have like leadership and citizenship and communication. So even back then you would learn to do things where you could communicate, whether it's like talking about it or actually teaching a class. And so I, and I, and I've got all my scrapbooks and sometimes I pull on out and, and I show people but yeah I taught my first class for 4-H and it was a um, what was a, your class yeah it was a quilted pumpkin wall hanging yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it was not close <laughs> but I still have it it's really dorky looking but I still have it and so Halloween time it sounds adorable I it goes out. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, imagine like a placemat, um, that has like some batting in it. And then you just like quilt the lines for the pumpkin. And then it has like, um, satin stitch, like triangles and a mouth and then like a green little, um, stem at the top, which is the handle. So, I'm going to Google it. It sounds like yeah. something I'd like to do with my nieces. <laughs> it's, it's, definitely. Yeah. It's adorable. And it was in a book at our school library. And I just, I was like, I love that project. So yeah, I taught that to our other 4-H kids in my, in, in our dining room on our dining room table. So, yeah, and I had some other fun little little projects and stuff, too. But um, I'm trying to think in college. I don't I mean, other than like normal, you know, presentations about your projects, but it wasn't so much teaching. So I think I would say there was probably a gap where I didn't like teach per se. But then once I graduated and started my business, I returned to 4-H volunteering and, um, and, uh, so we would like do like workshops and things like that. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, just, uh, oh gosh. I mean, everything from, um, like at our local bridal fairs, you know, sometimes it would be like, I went to one store and we did a presentation on like designing veils. And so sometimes I think early on, sometimes like the teaching or classes weren't just like how to sew a garment specifically, but you know, you get experience doing things like that. And I think it helps you just learn to commun, hopefully, hopefully learn to communicate. <laughs> um, and yeah. And so then I'm trying to think, I'm building up to like, so when I was doing teaching at the American Sewing Expo, so I, I would say that's when I really started doing lots of teaching. I, I was trying to pause there and think if I had anything like prior to that, that was like major sewing related. But I, I had actually written some articles and done some uh, competitions in some of the sewing magazines, um, like when I first started my business. So that would have been like fresh out of college. And I remember, um, I don't remember, I, I don't think it was 
threads, but I can't think of, I think it was like a craft magazine that doesn't exist anymore, but they had a contest for designing wedding crafts. And since I had just gotten married, I had designed this like card drawstring card bag that you put in like a hat box as like the base. And, and actually like I won that submission, which was kind of cool. And, um, and then, um, Oh, I think it was not sulky might've been, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but, um, but then, um, so I got to a machine embroidery as well. And so then I entered the, well, it was when Taconi corporation and baby locked own, own amazing designs. And so it was like amazing design and whatever thread they were related to. So they had a competition. And so I submitted, uh, because for my little niece who just got married, she was just like a baby. And so I made the, this dress all embroidered and I made these wings that were wired and then they had netting in the middle I'm not even sure I would be able to like replicate that today like because I did not know what I was doing again it was just like (laughs) I'm gonna figure it out um and uh, it's probably something like I would never teach anybody to do that because it was just too hard but I won that and so I remember I won a thousand dollars worth of like embroidery stuff and that was like you know starting my business I was like that is so amazing and um and so I think I had some opportunities to share you know a little bit with that early on but yes So um, I did the passion for fashion at the American Sewing Expo and and then I won that. And so the year afterwards, um, I went back and started teaching and and I taught there for several years. And, you know, you generate a lot of, you know, people just, you know, they have a picture of that design. Do you remember what year it was? Um, I do. It was the second the second or third year. Um, and I do have a picture. I feel like you guys probably threads was probably there. I'm sure. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think the first show yeah. I went to was maybe 2011. Yeah. In matter of fact, it's up, I have it on a mannequin up front in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the funny thing was like, I, st- you know, you get, it's kind of like an episode of project runway where, you know, you draw or whatever and whatever the, um, the theme of the contest was yes. and so you design, but I had just done a dress for one of my bra- rides that had like this um like these um uh like layered netting and and we did like these wide grommets like with the laces and stuff and I'd go in and like buff the grommets and color them and um I'm like I mastered that you know I'm working on several designs and I was like I'm gonna include that in my contest piece and so yeah and so I use like a black and white uh or a black with like white um suiting uh material but I made it into a pleated skirt with like a like a little um pleated layer on the hem then it had netting underneath and then I did this fitted bodice out of this um like a uh, plaid taffeta so it was like pink so it was a lot of combination of uh, um like different textures but yet they still kind of work together in different colors but yeah so I do have a picture of that I can yes I'll get that picture and we'll that. share it in the will, show notes yeah. and on YouTube um, too yeah. So yeah, just remind me, but yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I went back and, um, cause I, dra- I did draping. So that was part of the thing. Like when I did that design, it was like, okay, like I didn't have to rely on my pattern. I just draped it like really fast. And it was like, boom, I could spend more time, you know, sewing and doing all the little extra elements and things. And, and, uh, um, but I, you know, I just kind of treated it like any customer. I mean, I already had my, my business, you know, so it's like, I, you know, just kind of treated it like a customer came in and said, okay, this is my parameters, like help me design something. And, uh, um, yeah. And so that, that's really kind of how that worked. And, um, well, yeah. Joy, it always seems to me that <laughs> you're a very creative and energetic person. And it's <laughs> like, you, you have too many ideas to just keep them confined to like a traditional design or custom clothing business. So I have been curious too, and, and you haven't told me the story, but you said that there is a story behind uh, your first book published. Yeah. Um, and it's not really, it's not anything super me. I mean, I guess probably to most people, they'd probably like blow it off. But um, so some of it I'll keep vague just to kind of like protect the people involved. But um, so I, like I had mentioned earlier, like I do think everyone has some sort of gift that you're given. And I do think that um, like you should, whatever that is, whatever art or whatever you're good at, you should, you know, thrive and grow that skill. But I also think, you know, use it for the benefit of others 
others when you can and, um, you know, help others or the community, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, that can be a variety of ways. And so, um, and so I think there's a lot, and I have a lot of faith tied into, you know, just, um, again, be like diligent with the skills that your, you know, your God given abilities. Like, I do think there's something to that and, um, that you should, you know, be grateful for your skills and that they're not, it's not like, it's not me, you know, I kind of really feel like it's just something that I'm given. Like, it's like, I'm just a normal person, you know, but do you I think just, it's important to share those skills too. Do you think do, that yes. is part I of do. why you receive those skills? Yes, I do. Because I think that it's kind of like this whole circle, you know, I've yeah. told people that, you know, with anything, you know, you not you, but you're always like better than somebody, but there's always somebody better than you. And so I think you, you know, learn from those that and be humble and open to, you know, I just I always tell people, if you think, you know, like, let's just use zippers for an example, if you think like, you know, every way to sew a zipper, and you have nothing to learn, like, you really um, put, you know, you're putting a, like a brick on your head, like you, you can't grow if you think you know it all. So I think there's always someone you can learn from. But there are always lots of people that can learn from you. And so there's a lot of satisfaction when you can help somebody, you know, and so there, there, it's like this circle of <laughs> circle of life, I guess. But, but I do think it's important that, you know, you use that. And I think the more, you know, there's some, some truth to like, you know, when you're given some sort of, again, gift or, you know, think of someone who plays the piano, like if they just like, think of a, a maestro or something, if they just kept that to themselves, like, we miss out, you know, by not, right. you know, the benefit from that or, or the blessing or, you know, whatever term you want to use. And so, yeah, there's importance there. So, um, so I've always thought that was sewing and I've, I, in my mind, you know, I always have ideas. It's, it's like to a fault almost, but, um, but that's how my brain works. Like, how can I use this to help somebody? And I don't usually try to come up with ideas. I tend to more like when they pop into my head, I, I either am just like, that's a really great idea. That's a crazy idea. Or I got to run with that one. And so um, I had I had one that I was like, we got to run with this. And so it was teaching a class and there were some um, like teeny young, younger, like there were some grandmas in there and some teenagers and, and that kind you know, that it was a really good um, kind of therapeutic it sounds like for, a good mix. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. And so there were some kids that um, they were supposed to be involved in some other things, but they would never do that. But they came to this class that I taught and it just really like got them out of their shell. And so I'm just like, you know, and, and we were making pillowcases like it wasn't anything grand, but it was like really impactful. And sometimes it's the little things like that that really are where the impact is. And um and well, uh, actually, Joy, when you say it's impactful, uh, was uh, just being able to complete a project important for these students or, or how, could you say a little bit more about how it was impactful? For them. Yeah, um, no, that's a good, I think a variety of ways, just, uh, you know, like kids, they go through so much, you know, these days and, and a variety of issues. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes just, you know, feeling their worth or, you know, sometimes I know it's kind of vague, but sometimes kids and adults in general just need someone to tell them like, hey, like, let me show you something or like, hey, you did a good job. Like people don't do that enough. You know, we're so critical of ourselves or, or like with social media. I mean, it's, advantages but there's disadvantages too and there's a it's so easy um and can I can I name drop a sewer in a in a good way um, yes Sandra Butzina taught me this and I don't know her well but we were at a common thread event and she's this was just so spot on and she said it's so easy paraphrasing here um, but for people to just make a comment behind a screen name and just you know not realizing that like there's a real person behind that, you know, and I just, that stuck with me. And I mean, and I know that now, but that was the first time I ever heard anyone say that. And it was just like, that's really true, you know? And so, so yeah, with these kids, I think it was just, you know, sometimes kids just need attention or, you know, teenagers need someone to spend time with them or just to acknowledge yes. them. And, yes. um, and so I think that was just the underlying thing, but they came, you know, to this event and I was, I left and I was just like, Oh, and, and some people came be, because, because I, I'm like, Hey, do you want to come to this? And they're like, sure. You know, um, 
And, um, and so anyways, I was like, we have to do this again. And so the people in charge were just like, they didn't want to do it again because, um, somebody else wanted to be in charge of it when it wasn't like their passion. And it it just was like, Oh, "Oh," and my hands were tied. I couldn't really do anything. So I was like, really, like, I remember calling my mom and my mother-in-law and I was in tears. I mean, legit, I was just like, I I feel like this is my calling and I'm supposed to do this and like my hands are tied, you know, and it just like really bothered me. Um, And so that was that happened over a weekend and it was a Monday or Tuesday after that happened. So I, I feel like maybe I had the phone calls on Monday. So the next day, let's just say it was Tuesday, but give or take a day. Um, and so I know you had asked me about what's your journey for writing, you know, becoming an author. And I'm like, yeah. well, mine's a, li- mine's a little different because like the textbook way of becoming an author is like submit your manuscript. I mean, there's a variety of ways, but like, you know, connections are important, you know, and a variety of like tutorials on like how to publish a book. Um, and that was not my case. So, um, so I was working in my, my studio was still in my basement at the time and we had our whole lower level and I was just working away and my phone rings and, um, and it was, uh, F and W publishing at the time. And they're like, we saw your work at Martha Pullen school of art fashion. And we just loved your designs. We want you to write a book. What do you want to write on? Okay. Now, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> that at, is you know, not the usual path to you. becoming an I'm author. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, first of all, like, no, like, you, yeah, you just don't say, Hey, what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I, I mean, I think I knew that, but at the same time, looking back, I'm like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I'm like, well, um, so I have kind of an interesting way of teaching fit. And I'll interject here that so what how I teach fit, like I had my college professors come visit my studio, and they would say like, how do you fit people that you don't see in person? And so I would explain to them, like, I drape on my mannequin and then I do their measurements. I just like scale the pattern by proportion. Um, I do a fits in then there. They were even like my, my college professors and other professors are like, how do you like they, you know, how do you do that? And so and I have been doing that for a while because I've had, had had my business for a while and I've been sewing for people around the country that I'd mail dresses and um, as well as local. And so I'm like, well, what do you think about a fit book? So we got they're like, sounds great. And so I don't same day I get a phone call and it was craftsy and they're like, um, yeah, a few people like recommended you. Do you want to come and teach a class? What do you want to teach on now? Obviously like I'm paraphrasing how they said it, but that's really what happened. And I'm like, well, um, I've got this really great fit technique and I'm writing a book now. <laughs> how about that? Um, and so they're like, okay. Um, and then a little while later that day I get this phone call. It was like the trifecta. And so then it this was like, all on one day yeah uh, and I'm just telling everybody this does not happen ever <laughs> ever 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 and and then it was like a product deal thing that I was working on so I just looked at that and I'm like okay thank you Lord for blessing me because I really needed that and you know I think it was just a little gift for you know being diligent and like I said it is not me oh and um, that's true this was right on the heels of your disappointment about the in-person class yeah yeah I I do find that you know there's a saying like when a door is closed like another door opens and and that's true uh and I tell my kids this too you know like again whatever you're involved in you know there's always you know like you try to win an award or like my daughter graduated high school last year so she applied for scholarships and she got some, but there of course are lots that she didn't get, you know? And, and uh, so trying to explain to her like, Hey, you know, you can't win them all, but there's always like something better that comes along. And, and I will tell you that a couple of years prior to this happening, I did actually submit a manuscript for a book that um, there was a call to do related to a sewing uh, topic. And I was just like, okay, like the, I, you know, I was like, oh, I want to do this. And I, and I didn't, and I, you know, I, I didn't get it. A friend of mine did. And I was really excited that they were able to do that. And it was just, you know, like, and, and it turned out, you know, waiting the right, the, even better thing, you know, came along. So I do think there's a lot of that as well, you know, like in, in, um, in things that, you know, something better, you know, there's always the right thing and it's hard to force something if it's not the right time. So. 
Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's easy to get it's easy to get discouraged when things don't work out uh, as your class didn't. But I'm glad something better came along for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me, so, me too. Me <laughs> too. Joy, when we were talking about your path um, before the podcast, one thing we were talking about is how you develop trust in your audience. And you mentioned that you had some idea about uh, sort of pointers or tips, positive ones for our audience to find a sewing instructor that's going to be the right fit and is, tr- is authoritative and trustworthy and authentic for you. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and I think this comes from, you know, sometimes students will, will say, oh, well, I saw this or I read this or which is the better option. And so I just always kind of guide people to determine, you know, where, when you're getting your sewing education, like social media is really popular these days. We all know that. And there, there are many forms of education from entertainment to more like diehard, like skills, you know, and so they're different. Is anyone, you know, better than the other or is one wrong? No, not necessarily. But I do think that, um, you know, when you're, you need to try to decipher or or kind of, you know, funnel through like what the entertainment is when it comes to sewing versus, okay, I want to learn like from a legitimate educator, you know, Um, it's one thing because it takes time, you know, to, to, if you're like a blogger, for example, I mean, to write every single day and film like little tiny, like YouTube shorts, which I love those. I have some channels that I follow for entertainment and it takes a lot of time to do that. So you have to kind of recognize that, um, you know, if you're watching someone who like, that's all they do, that that's entertainment doesn't mean that they're not knowledgeable, but, um, but I'm a big fan of, you know, you want to ask people, you know, when they're teaching you something like what is their, um, what's their background, their portfolio, you know, if, if um, I'm trying to think of a clothing example, let's just take wedding gowns. Cause we were talking about. Oh, bro- sure. Yeah. Like, that's a good gown. example. So if, if like, you could have someone who sews like immaculately, but if they've never sewn a wedding gown or fitted one, um, anything like, like think traditional wedding gown, not just like a dress that could, you know, double as a wedding gown, but think like traditional, you know, wedding with all the tailoring that goes inside of that and understanding the materials. And then all of a sudden they get out there and they're like, today I'm going to teach on that. Like there's a little bit of like red flags of like, Hey, like, you might be able to sew pants really, really well, but you've never like done that. So, you know, you do want to learn from people that are an authority in, in what they're teaching. And so um, I don't teach everything in sewing because there are some things that I can do, but I'm not an expert at. And so I think that that's really important, you know, like as a teacher, like I don't try to teach everything because I don't know everything. Um, and, and my husband, he's really savvy in business. And he even taught me early on too, like, you don't want to get so broad in your scope that you know it's you know you can't like you know the whole like master uh, what is that phrase like you know master of none or you know or I can't think of how that goes (laughs) I'm like horrible at reading I can't either but I know exactly (laughs) what what I mean. mean I do. David, I do. Oh, Jack, Jack of all trades, master, master of, none. of none. Yeah. yeah. And that's it's like, it. that's really true. And, and even like in my business, I mean, I do turn people down like all, I wouldn't say daily, but weekly I have people call in or pop in the door and it's like, you know, I'm not set up to do that. Or sometimes you just don't like to do something cause it's not in your normal scope of work. Or sometimes it just takes too long to, uh, like I had someone bring a bunch of leather work in. They just popped in the door the other day. I'm not, I have a machine that can do that, but I am not set up for that right now. And so it would take way, you know, too much time. So the, the moral of the story is I think like in sewing education, like, and if you're a teacher out there, don't feel like just because, you know, just because joy teaches something you have to teach that, or like, I'm a big fan of teach what you know, but what you know by experience, not just what you know, because you read some books for 10 years and now you're going to regurgitate that information. Like, I do think you have to actually like be doing, you know, be like fitting, fitting, Fitting's a really good one. Like you, like you can teach fit from a book, but like you really have to be fitting people. Um, I think really there's some, just some, some underlying things that pop up 
um, having worked with real people and different shapes oh, and sizes. Oh, the theory is so different from looking yes. at actual wrinkles yes. on a muslin. Yeah. And you know, you know, and the crazy thing is for students, that is the hardest thing for them to understand. Like, oh, I, I mean, every sewing teacher out there will know what I'm saying. Or you guys do too when you're like, people will say like, well, I read this in a book. And it's like, but you aren't a book. Like you're a real person and your arm looks different or you know um and so there there's a point where like you know the rules but then you can break them to customize them for yourself and um yeah and so just yeah as far as students go just you know really like almost like vet your teachers and then i think the advantage to that is like there's great teachers out there and everybody has different areas that they're just really good at i know there's people that i look to for certain things and and that are that are my inspiration to me and and don't try to be like them, just learn and, you know, and then develop, you know, your own version of, of what you're learning. And I think that's what's cool about sewing because there's just infinite combinations of people and fabrics and patterns and, and application. There's always something new to learn. Yeah. Well, Joy, it's been wonderful talking with you. We've yeah. gotten to the end of our time. And I did want to mention before we sign off, I did want to ask you to share where can people find you on social media? Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm on Facebook a lot. So if you can go to Facebook, I, I'm under Designer Joy Mahone, M-A-H-O-N. Uh, and then I have my Perfect Pattern and Fit Club there as well. Um, you can go to my website, which is designerjoy, J-O-I.com, and then Instagram at Designer Joy as well. And I do want to mention that we just recently finished a project. It's a new e-learning class with Joy, which will be available through Threads. You can visit our website to find out about it, but it's a complete guide to interfacing. And if you listen to the ad on this podcast episode, there is a promo code for 20% off. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Joy. Thanks for um, being on Sewing with Threads once more. And I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you to our guest for joining us, and thanks to all of you for listening. Please remember to send your comments, questions, and suggestions to th at taunton.com. And please like, comment, and subscribe wherever you're listening. It helps others find our podcast. Until next time, keep on sewing with threads. <laughs>